Hi, I'm Daphne Richards, and this is Augie Doggy. Many of us are troubled by mammals that chew the bark of young trees. Connie asked us what to do about her young elm that a porcupine chewed. Will young trees recover? Unfortunately, the answer is maybe yes, maybe no. It all depends on the extent of the damage. The growing tissue, called the cambium, of young trees is located very close to the bark of the surface of the tree. So if it's damaged, the growing tissue most likely is too, and the plant cannot regrow this very important area. But if the damage area is small, the tree will grow around it and create other connections from the roots to the growing tissue above. Eventually, the damaged area will be covered by new bark and will be less susceptible to secondary infestations of insects and diseases. Younger trees recover faster than older trees, and many times critters are more attracted to younger trees whose bark is more tender and less thick, so quite often the tree is able to recover. If you notice any damage, or if you know that you have critters living in your area, go ahead and protect your tree by enclosing it in a fence for a few years until it gets old enough and has thick enough bark to be less attractive to animals. Once the bark's thicker, the tender growing area is much further from the surface, so even if you have damage, maybe from a deer rubbing his antlers on the tree, the cambium won't be damaged. You definitely don't want to use plastic or other materials to wrap the tree. Those will trap moisture next to the bark, creating a perfect environment for insects and diseases. Hardware cloth makes a very good fence. Place it around the tree very close so that critters can't sneak in, not, not directly touching the tree. Connie also asks if she should spray anything on the damaged area to protect it. No, that's not necessary. It won't keep animals away and it will actually inhibit the plant's natural ability to heal itself. Our plant of the week is gray Santalina. Santalina camisipricis, also known as lavender cotton, even though it's not related to lavender or to cotton. Fortunately, Santalina is most commonly referred to by its common name and is almost never confused with other plants, so you won't need to learn how to spell or pronounce its mouthful of a Latin name. This lovely little evergreen or evergray ground cover is a cute little button of a plant that eventually spreads and covers the ground up to two feet wide. It usually stays short, only about 12 inches tall, but it may get as tall as two feet. It loves the heat and the sun, and prefers very well-drained soil, requiring almost no water. In fact, like many desert-type plants, Santalina will suffer greatly if overwatered. The leaves are very fragrant, making it resistant to deer, and during summer, it will produce a prolific amount of small, bright yellow flowers that will persist for a very long time. To do in your garden this week, consider planting some cool weather vegetables such as cabbage, broccoli, collards, or kohlrabi. Also, watch for black spot on roses so you can treat with fungicide before the problem gets out of control. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit klru.org ctg to send us your questions and plants of the week from your garden. Mm -hmm.